You represent an organization that ministers to, correct me if I'm describing it incorrectly, incorrectly but ministers to women with unplanned pregnancies and also women who have uh, suffered, uh, who are in post-abortion recovery, who have, who, have, who have aborted a baby and are, are suffering because of abortion. So I don't want to talk too much. I want to give you an opportunity to, because I failed to record it, a couple of days ago to just go through and present as though as though we were the Senate um, what Pearls and Treasures does and why you objected to and what your objections were to the sexual reper so-called SRH bill, the abortion Kahika bill before the Kenya Senate. Thank you so much, Jonathan, for the chance. Um, so this is our submission from Pearls and Treasures Trust. Uh, Pearls and Treasures Trust is, a, is an organization that um, counsels ladies in crisis pregnancy. It also counsels ladies who have gone through abortions. And um, we also mentor women. We also mentor women, young women, old women in making um, the correct choices in life. We also run our a counseling session or a mentorship program with the girls and young mothers in Madare slums. So I would like to make my submission against the Article 26 and 32 2C2 of the bill from my extensive work in the area uh, for the last 10 years. So I'm not speaking from a point of view of reading it from books, no. I'm speaking as a person who has interacted with these women. I'm speaking as a person who has counseled women who have gone through abortions and I'm also speaking as a woman who has gone through abortions. So narrowing down to women who have been wounded by abortion, in my practice I have been able to see more than 300 women suffering from post-abortion distress. Either through Either through one on one counseling or the 12 week sessions we run through a support group structure. These women are from all walks of life, different social and economic backgrounds, aged between 12 and 55 years old, from birth from both urban and rural settings. And even those who procured abortion in countries where abortion is legal. And I think I just have to make a note on that. Just because abortion is legal doesn't exempt a woman from going through all the emotional turmoil that a woman goes through after they've had an abortion. Yes. So um, <laughs> when they gather around to go through the sessions, they do not look at their social and financial status. Rather, one thing unites them in their pain, and it is their pain of abortion, which we refer to as post-abortion syndrome. This is the psychological and emotional effect of abortion on a woman because she is unable to process these emotions at, after abortions. This is because the society prescribes abortion to her, but her motherhood nature uh, ingrained in her and values do not align with the prescription. When God created us women, be, we, women, we are naturals. So definitely when a woman has an abortion, they are like destroying the part of, of, of nurturing the God, that God um, created in them. So most of the time, a woman will then go into, into an emotional turmoil because they do not know how to connect how God created them and now where they are at. So from the from over the three hundred women we have seen all by we have seen only two had their abortion done in a proper clinic and hospital. Even in countries abroad where abortion is legal, some of them are victims of rape. Of the two who had backstreet abortions, one woman had a permanent complication while the, while the other had a temporary complication that resolved on its own after a month, partly because she couldn't find the doctor who procured the abortion. From all the others who have had their abortions in proper hospitals, only three women had lifelong complications. All 100% came to us because they were suffering emotional and psychologically from what they thought was a liberating choice. The question we have to face is, where, is whether this choice was in agreement to their deeply rooted value system informed by our own culture 
and religious belief. This explains the turmoil they find themselves into. Uh, because abortion, when abortion is presented to you, it is presented as a solution to the crisis that mm-hmm. you need. Mm-hmm. But we mm-hmm. all know that you cannot solve a crisis, mm-hmm. um, a one-time crisis by a long-time decision. Crisis pregnancy is just a one-time crisis that is going to end after nine months. But then abortion is going to be to be permanent. You see, when a woman has an abortion, this woman now becomes a mother to a dead body. That's to correct. A dead baby. It doesn't make it, it doesn't negate the fact that this woman was once a mother. So for example when I get married, I uh, I'm not going to just going to start giving birth. There will be a baby somewhere in my mind that I know I was once a mother, uh-huh. but the baby was is not here. The baby was born. I don't mean to interrupt you, but the, the baby was born. The baby the baby was simply born dead. Yes, yes. Or the baby was killed. Yes. So some of the symptoms of post abortion syndrome that torment some of the women I have seen is self punishing behavior. Uh, let me just expound on that. And I'm going to expound on it by giving an example of a lady who came to one of the sessions that we had run and she had not gone to the salon for six months. She had not even brushed her teeth or showered. And then she came and sat in a corner. She was not talking to everyone, anyone. So um, four weeks into the study, she one day came and she had showered, she had gone to the salon. And so you see such woman is punishing herself. Why? Because she feels she's a very bad person she feels she doesn't um she doesn't do what she to atone for the aborted baby by getting another as i've said a woman is a natural so when they have abortions lady noel lady noel um so please back up about about two sentences because uh, there was a technological interruption Back up about two sentences, and I'll I'll cut it correctly. Okay. okay. Sorry. All right. So some of the symptoms of post-abortion syndrome that torment some of the women I have seen is self-punishing behavior. And I say that um, I'm going to explain that by an example of a lady who came to our classes. And when this lady came for like for six months, she had never visited the salon. She had never um, done manicure or pedicure. She hated herself. She had never showered. She had not even brushed her teeth. Don't ask me how I know, but I know it. Anyway, so when she came to the class, she she didn't talk to anyone. She sat in a corner. But after two to three weeks into the classes, into the sessions, she one day came and she had visited the salon. She had done manicure and pay because she was a totally different person. And that explains that a woman who has gone through an abortion punishes themselves because they feel I'm a very bad person. If I can kill my own baby, what I mean, why do I deserve anything good? Why do I deserve to look good? Or if I'm looking good on the outside, people do not know what I have done. So very many times they tend to feel like they are lying to the whole world that they are good people and yet they are very bad people. Uh, so a woman will have the need to atone for the aborted baby by getting another. Why is it that way? Because God created us women as naturals. So when a woman has an abortion, most of the women will want to get another baby. And we call it an atonement baby. Why do they want to get it? Because they want to suit that place. Place, the motherly place in their heart that um, that they, they destroyed by having a bush. Yes, yes. And then they feel if I get um, if I get another baby, that other baby is going to replace the baby that I had a, yes. that I aborted. But one thing they do not know is that when you bought a baby, you have aborted a baby. Even if you got ten more babies after that, none of that baby, those babies, is going to replace the baby that you. It cannot. Bought. It cannot atone. It cannot atone. Yes. What now? No, let me. Before we go further, I'm. I'm sorry. I want to interrupt you, as a Christian, okay, okay. as and to ask you a question. As a Christian, when we when we know in our hearts we have sinned, we are not a good person. What can atone the blood of 
Jesus. Amen. The blood of Jesus can atone the sins that we do. So, and that is why whenever we sin as Christians, we are sinners. Like the Bible says that none, nobody can say they have not sinned. That's right. We are all sinners, but the blood of Jesus has atoned for that. So then when we sin, we appropriate the blood of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Okay. Amen. Okay. Yeah, please, please continue. Amen. I just want to be clear. I wanted to be perfectly clear to people as we, when we mention the concept of atonement, that, 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 that okay. the fulfillment of atonement is the blood of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A woman gets depressed. For example, after I had the abortion that I had, I never used to love the light. And when they say that, uh, that the depression is a dark cloud, it is so, so true. I used to hate light. I would, um, I would go into the bedroom, draw the curtains, cover myself, or I will be under the bed because I hate light. I was so, so depressed. I was like extremely depressed. Mm. Some have suicidal thoughts, and why so? Because they feel they want to go and be with the baby that they are putting. Mm. Uh -huh. Some some get into alcohol and drug addiction. Some have a loss a, a loss of zeal for life. Multiple relationship. Why multiple relationships? Because there's um there's a, like a, there's there's a hole a hole or a, a gap or I don't know how to explain it in their hearts, but they want someone to feel it. Yes. So most of the women or some of the women will go from relationship to relationship. Seeking this thing or seeking that pastor that is going to fulfill this place in their heart that is yearning to be loved, that is yearning to, to get a connection. But one thing they don't know that is that, again, the only person, the only thing, the only person that can connect and um, and fill that gap in your heart is God. And you see, when they get into these relationships, then they then start abusing sex. And why is it so? Because sex is soothing. So then, by having sex, they are soothing this place in their heart that is wounded. Uh -huh. So can I, for, for a moment, can I, I want to ask you, in terms of the bill that, um, that you were opposing from the unique perspective of, of being a woman who has committed abortion and a woman who daily works with and counsels people who, who uh, are suffering from post-abortion syndrome, from that pain and that guilt. When, when you oppose the bill, I mean, how would you characterize the bill? Let's, let me move from the, the people who are suffering to now this, what I would characterize as an attack on people at their weakest spiritual and psychological point specifically these women who need forgiveness, they need the atonement we have already discussed from the blood of Christ, and, and yet instead, isn't this bill telling them, no, instead of, of seeking Christ, justify it. Own what you have done, and it is your right. Yes, so when, when, you, when you're doing the counseling sessions, uh, there's something, there's a topic we tackle that is called relief and denial. So in denial, what, what, uh, what counselors, when you go to a secular counselor, what they're going to tell you is deny the fact that you had an abortion or take it and store it somewhere. Do not even think about it. Or you did not have bought a baby. So some of the terms that girls and ladies are going to use when they had abortions is, I didn't kill a baby, I just terminated a pregnancy, uh -huh. it was a blob of tissue, or in some other very many scientific terminologies. Equivocate. So, Equivocate and comport place. compartmentalize. Yeah. Yes. To suit that place, to cover the fact that they had abortions, uh -huh. uh -huh. and to make them feel uh -huh. that, by the way, whatever you did was not wrong. You did not kill a baby. That was just a blob of tissue. That was just um something. It was just blood. It was not a baby. So now, for a bill to step in and involve the whole society in 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 underscoring and affirming that denial, that denial and that lie. Is, is to is to buttress that that denial and confusion that is going to come out because it's not true, but it's 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 to support it with an entire country's um, legislative power, saying we are actually as a country now saying that the lie that you've believed we're owning that lie, and but in the but in the long term, 
even though that can extend the power of the lie, because God is God, and God is in heaven, and the truth is the truth, that just makes the suffering bigger, doesn't it? Exactly. Exactly. It does. And you see, nobody has ever hidden the truth. It seems that they, they tried hiding the truth, but three days after that, it resurrected. So nobody can hide the truth. The Very truth true. The truth will always come, come out. And so you see, even these ladies who have abortions and they deny and cover it up, at the end of the day, it might take one year, it might take ten years, but they will come to face this thing and they will have to they will have to come into terms with what they did. Yes. And it might surprise you, but one of the coping a few of the coping mechanisms that these women have after having abortions is being pro life. Sure. Or being very strong pro choice. One or the other. Yes. So they're, they're trying to cover. They're trying to cover the fact that um, I had an abortion. I did the wrong thing. So those who are pro-choice will want other people to go and and make the same decision. They become in, they become even evangelical about it. It's almost like they're 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 religiously proselytizing. They have a goal. To make any woman, I've noticed it over and over and over, they have a goal to make any woman who's a virgin, a virgin to lose her virginity, and any woman yes. who, who has not had an abortion, to have an abortion like them. Yes. There's, there's a lady that she hired in Pals and Treasures who was working with Marie Stokes. And before she went to work with Marie Stokes, she had had three abortions. And she was telling us when she went to work with Marie Stokes, well, her, her main duty in Marie Stokes was to handle the phone call, like mm -hmm. the call center. So mm -hmm. she had the phone, the organization's phone, and she would post ladies who want to have abortions in the respective Marie Stokes that was near wherever mm -hmm. this ladies were. Mm -hmm. And after that, she would get a cut from it. So it hit her when one day she received a call and it was her sister who was calling because she wanted to have an abortion. But knowing what abortion had done to her, that is when it snapped her back to reality that, by the way, this thing is wrong. So you see, after they've had an abortion or after they've had abortions, many of them tend to push young girls or girls or women, even women in marriages, to choose abortions. Uh -huh. we, say, we say that... Um, when, when you have a headache and you take Panadol, yes. Panadol has sorted the headache. Yes. When you get pregnant and go have an abortion, abortion has sorted this pregnancy. Mm. So chances are so high when you get pregnant again, because abortion sorted you, it is going to sort you again. Mm. You go to, to have an abortion. Mm. And so people never understand how comes a lady has had 12 abortions. Like we canceled a lady who had had 12 abortions. But they, did, they don't know that apart from it being a spiritual issue, yes. it is also like Panadol. So when when I have a headache after one hour, no, the next day I'll take Panadol. Because Panadol sorted me out today, so it is also going to sort me out tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Well, wow. did you know that uh, under the um, under the Roman Empire, uh, which lasted for more than a thousand years, um, for the better part of a thousand years, many uh, Roman citizens were also allowed. The men were allowed to kill members of their household. There might have been a stigma attached to it, but essentially, the head of a Roman household could abort. He couldn't be thrown in jail. He could kill his son. He could kill his servant. He could kill his slave. He could kill his wife in some circumstances, and and the government would not prosecute uh, him. And one of the now we look around, we don't see the Roman Empire anymore, except to the degree we've inherited their forms of government. But Christianity came in and began and reformed the legal co code and began to restrain that. Now those governments and civil and that civilization which inherited the traditions of the Greco-Roman Empire, has now, in the West, repudiated Christ. And that pressure has now come back to, like where you are, Kenya, the former colonies of Western civilization, of the British Empire, American and European empires, and is now pressuring you heavily to 
also back away from these restraints of Christianity that criminalized abortion. How can you talk about that before before we close? Jonathan, come again, come again. I'm, I'm asking you, with reference to this bill being supported mm -hmm. by the Western powers, the Western powers that were formerly Christian and are no longer Christian, pressuring your country to legalize and normalize abortion. Can you talk to that, please, Lady Noel? Um, uh, I first of all think that that's still colonizing us. That's new colonization. Mm. So you're taking your values, you're taking your values and state names, and you're coming and imposing it on us. So apart from your colonization, it is greed from our leaders. So then IPPF and the likes of Maristops come here, they give money and they tell our leaders to do what? Uh -huh. To push on abortion, to push for abortion, to push for contraceptives and yes. everything. I was doing a, a research on contraceptives and giving of the contraceptives and one thing they know is that when you give a young girl who is 16 contraceptives, chances are so high that after having said yes. three or four times and being on contraceptives, they will forget to, to take the uh -huh. And because they, they, they because they have been taking the e pills, then their body can get pregnant so quickly. So when they forget to get the e pill, then definitely chances are so high they're going to get pregnant. And now because abortion is the main thing, abortion is the main business. They want these girls who these young girls now to go and have abortions because of of the failed contraceptions. Because they make apart money. From that, yeah. Apart from that, we have the African has definitely been a threat to the to the whites. Yes. They are a threat to the whites. A, a demographic so threat. Then, pardon? A demographic threat in terms of population. Yes. Yes, in terms of population. But one thing that the Bible tells me is you see, the children of Israel when the Egyptians were frustrating them, it is when they were multiplying exactly. more. Exactly. So they were now the more threats to them. It, I mean, someone can tell us that these things are not biblical, but the truth is that these things are biblical. The Bible is alive. The Bible is very much it alive. Is so yeah. alive. It is so much alive. It is happening in our society when we're just looking at it. I mean, right now, so the West, it's okay to have an abortion, like it's okay to have an abortion after nine months. There are some states where it's okay to for a woman to give birth and then she declares this baby is not a baby and it's okay for them to be killed. Which was another thing that bef before Christianity was also common in the Roman Empire was just the, and also is in China and other parts of the world today, just the abandonment of children after they are born. Just abandon them in a field or in a ditch. <laughs> Lady Noel, I want to say thank you very much. We're already past 23 minutes, but I really, really, really thank you for, for the time that you've given me today and for your wonderful presentation. Karibu sana, Jonathan, and thank you for the interview. Hey, God bless you and bless the work of, of your hands in Jesus' name.